Welcome home, my soul foodies. It's your soul food enthusiast, Shawnee, and you're at Shawnee's house. Now, we're getting ready to get into these dishes, and I'm getting ready to answer all your wishes. I'm going to give you the keys and the secrets to preparing soulful, flavorful, meaningful dishes that are going to remind you of home with a touch of my love. So now, Mikasa is kind of su casa, so why don't we get into the kitchen? Welcome to the House of Soul, and I am your girl, Shawnee. I am the chef, the cook, the creator, and that's probably all you'll be able to call me, but just make sure you don't ever call me late for dinner. So today is kind of like one of those days where I'm a little bit out of it. It's been a very rough day. It was a super hectic week um, prior to this day. And so I need to build myself back up. I need to get some things in me that are healthy and that make me feel good and that are just really good to my soul. What better dish than a beautiful dish of chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup is like next level for any grandmother or mother that is taking care of their child. And we're doing next level chicken noodle soup here today. It's gonna be a few little steps and a bunch of really powerful, beautiful leaves and spices that we're gonna put in it that are gonna lift my spirits up and make me really feel good. So. If you've got some good things in your pantry that are gonna help boost your immune system, then I would say grab those things and get to the pot and put them in and season them so that you can't really taste them, but let them work on you. I wanna make sure that I share the soursop leaf with you. Those things are ordered online, um, burdock root, Bladderack, sea moss, and chlorophyll. These things are used heavily in like the really big health phenomenon, Dr. Sebi's diet or lifestyle. Um, Dr. Africa used them. And a lot of other health gurus out here in the world are using these products in their vitamins, in their powders, their super greens. And we need to figure out how we can infuse these things into our soul food because our soul food should not harm us, it should heal us. So I hope you're ready and I hope you're prepared to get healed with some chicken noodle soup right here at the House of Soul. Welcome to the House of Soul and we are going to touch your soul today. So like the pandemic came and it is pretty much going in whatever direction is going, just get out of here. And what I discovered over the course of that time was that there are a lot of powerful, really beneficial herbs out there that help to boost and sustain excellent health, right? I mean, I had my kids and my husband going crazy drinking teas, absolutely a reminder we drank tea we sniffed citrus water and we ate soup we drank broth we did a lot of really healthy we did a lot of healthy things in order to make sure that we kept our immune system up so what i would say is instead of getting like traditional tea from the bag that you buy right any other brand I don't want to name them, but you can make natural tea that is so much better for you. And it can be done with a lot of things that you can find online. So what I found was that lemon, and I'm doing all this because my vibration is a little bit low. And I'm trying to get my you know, my levels up and my chemistry up and my energy and I want to be excited. One of the things that I believe that I need to do is take in some citrus, right? So I got a lemon here. I already got my hot water. And this is going to be a process because you need these things to steep in order to get the best results. So I'm taking some lemon and this is just pretty much for the tea. We ain't spilling no tea. We're gonna drink some tea so that we can heal ourselves. And you're gonna squeeze the juice of the lemon in there and then put it in there because 
the actual lemon rind, the, the, the skin on there has great benefit to it as well. And then I have soursop leaves. So soursop leaves are like an anti-cancer leaf that are super powerful for you if you want to get your you want to get your health up, you want to get your weight up, you want to feel better. You took take this every day and put it in your food. I put it in just about everything that I eat and drink at home. So I take this and what I would say is once you take this and put this in here and steep it, you can dry that leaf out and let and do it again. So you can use it in the tea again, you can put it in food, you can break it down, you can blend it, you can do whatever you want. But right now, I need to get my energy up and so I want to put that in there. And then I'm going to take my very fancy darling, my flavored lemon spoon stirrer, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to put it in my honey stirrer. And I'm going to take my honey stirrer and I'm going to swirl it around in this lavender honey. I love lavender honey. When I tell you, you get such a soothing feeling from taking in some lavender honey in your food, this right here just soothes me. So now I'm going to I'm gonna let this steep for roughly about 8 to 10 minutes. And you can drink it hot or cold, but it's best to drink it when it's hot. And when it gets nice and, you know, married together and everything starts releasing, and that leaf starts to release all of its benefits into that water, that's when I'm going to take that all in and take a sip of that. I hear my, my stirrer like cracking from the heat. So, so now we're going to get our soup together. And what I want is for you to not really be afraid of the things that I'm putting in this soup. I want you to really like embrace these things. Because one of the things with soul food, soul food caught a super bad rap. You know, like back in the day when our ancestors were cooking, they were preparing soul food with lard and, you know, heavy pig fats and all kind of things like that. And that kind of like didn't really, uh, it didn't like, um, convince people that soul food was really good. What I've done is I have changed the game in soul food. And I'm making sure that my people get elevated, get healthy, get happy, get right. And so we're getting ready to fix this soup and I'm telling you this soup is so the truth. We're starting out with some chicken that I have sitting here and we're gonna put a few things in there and we're gonna cook our chicken first before we start to create the soup and add water and broth and all that good stuff. So I got my heat on and I'm gonna take a little bit of my organic canola mixed with my grapeseed oil and I'm gonna put that right in the pot and I'm gonna turn my heat down to like medium heat because there's a couple of things that I wanna be able to put in here um, that are gonna cook and marry with the chicken. So I got a couple things of garlic clove Garlic clove is great when you're cooking it down with any kind of food because it starts to infuse and let off all this really buttery, oniony kind of like flavor in your food, which I totally love. And I just took those couple right there. And then I want to make sure that I get some onion because who the heck cooks without onions? I don't know, but you need to get your life together if you are, because I can't. I love good onion in my food. Tastes delicious. Oh. I'm like trying to be crazy with my knife right now. So that's heating up pretty good. And I want to pull, pull this off right here. And I want everything to kind of like be even. I'm like weirded out by it when it's not even. And then you're going to take your onion. I don't need this half just yet, so I'm going to rest that off to the side. And the onion is going in first because the onion is going to help, you know, really flavor this, this soup. You can see it's hot. Now I'm being crazy. And I just threw that bad boy in there, right? And I want to get the steam in it. I want to take my heat down just a tiny bit more. Because I don't want it to be aggressively out of control, right? But I want it to cook nicely. And I want to get it down enough where it cooks, it's translucent. It almost caramelized. I don't want to get to the point of caramelization. Um, 
I want it to get cooked down where it's like translucent and almost see-through, right? And that's how you know, like you really like release everything in the onion, all that water, all that flavor. And then after you get the onions in there and the heat is pretty much tempered, then you can put your garlic because you know your garlic won't burn. Because burnt garlic don't taste good, sorry. I've had some dish through where I burned some garlic and I tried to hide it and there's just no hiding it. That thing sticks out like a sore thumb. Like a girl in a bad wig. That's just what it looks like. And now that I got that in there, I can add my chicken. And I'm not going to season the chicken just yet. Not until I get it in the pan because I want to make sure that it's even and that everything gets coated. And I don't want to really be touching. I don't want to really touch all over it either. Because you know this is like. That's like cooking 101. And like making sure that you don't cross contaminate. Okay. I'm getting ready to do surgery right now. I'm moving my bowl out of the way. Just because I'm coming in contact with the chicken. And I don't want that to be touching all over my cutting board where I'm cooking that where I'm cutting vegetables and I'm gonna place my chicken in the pot this is gonna be some serious chicken soup right here it's gonna make me so happy just make sure everything gets like has its own place and I can take my gloves off and now we're gonna get those pieces of chicken evenly coated with seasoning. So I got some some nice coarse black pepper, which I love, because I need to like clean myself out, clear myself out. Like I tell you guys all the time, pepper is a natural laxative. Then I got some white powder. I love, love, love white powder because it's a little stronger than the black powder. Um, I don't know if that's some kind of like racial divide kind of issue, but we're gonna ignore that because um, it's about diversity and growth and unity, right? Um, but it has a punch in it that's like very powerful. I've got some dry thyme. I like the dry thyme in the soup. It gives off, it gives off, you know, a little bit more herby, earthy kind of flavor. So make sure that you cover all of the chicken. I've got a little bit of a mix of like cayenne, paprika, a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, all in one in this seasoning right here. We want to make sure we cover those really nice. Remember, layering the flavor. That is super important. And I'm making sure I'm covering all my pieces. And then I've got my famous pink Himalayan salt, which I do not leave home without. And we're going to make sure that we cover all those little pieces of chicken in there. Just like that. My grandmother used to cook chicken noodle soup. And her thing with chicken noodle soup was she counted every piece of chicken that was in the pot. And for every person that was at her house, when she cooked her chicken noodle soup, she made sure that you didn't get more chicken, chicken wings than another person in the house. Everybody had to get an even amount of chicken wings in her house. So I want to make sure that each side of the chicken wing cooks. And so I'm going to let that do its thing real fast, you know, like for a minute. I'm not going to rush it. And I'm going to grab some of these really powerful ingredients that I want you guys to start thinking about using in your foods, in your teas, and in your drinks. So if I can grab them because they're trying to get away, I will show you. So what I got here is chlorophyll. I have a mix of sea moss and bladderwrack, and I have burdock root. Now, what I will tell you is that when you're taking these things out of these little capsules and putting them in your drinks and putting them in your food, sometimes they can be very aggressive and taste very, very strong. So making sure that you're seasoning your food really well so that you don't have to taste those strong flavors in that you, know, you want to make sure that you do. So I'm doing it in the very beginning stages because I want to drown out the taste of it because it's very sharp. But I want all that good stuff that's in that. I want to feel better. This is really healing soup. Like seriously, like 
Your grandma wasn't doing this, okay? So, I'm teaching y'all something that you just need to know. Like, you need to be doing this to your food. And I'm putting all of it. I did two capsules of each. If you were to do, like, a traditional regimen taking in these capsules, these tablets or vitamins every morning, you would do roughly about two to four capsules each day um, in the morning and at night. And you would do it every single day. You would make it your life. And this would really be boosting your immune system. But when you're doing it in your food and you're being very gradual about it, because you're going to do it in every, almost every dish if you can, you're getting enough of that where you don't have to like overdo it. And now I'm going to give it just a quick little stir because we're going to season again in order to layer the flavors and drown out that aggressive taste or that flavor in those capsules. So I'm going to get it off of its raw side and have it on its cooked side. And you're going to let these not cook all the way. You're going to cook them just enough where that when we go to add in our broth and water, in our water and broth, it won't take as long to, to stew or to cook up. So now I have that cooked on the other side. What I want to do is I want to take, and everybody takes this, right? So this is the soursop leaf that I showed you. I'm taking two really generous pieces of soursop leaf. I'm putting that in there. And I'm going to grab some bay leaves. Because bay leaves make soup taste really, really good. Like, it gives off a really earthy sort of flavor. It doesn't come off like peppery or strong. But if you like Italian stews, minstrone, anything like that, um, that bay leaf gives off a nice flavor. I put it in my stews like oxtail. I put it in my spaghetti, stuff like that. So that's what I'm doing with. I'm putting that in there with the soursop leaf because I want those things to work together and not against each other. And I want a really nice balance of flavor in my soul food soup or my healing soup. You want to give it a little bit of a spin because we're getting ready to season again. And we're going to kind of like just go over it one more time with one generous pinch from each. This is going to solidify the flavor in the beginning stages because you're going to have to add more flavor when you go to add your liquid. Get that in there really good and get it going, moving around. So now I'll prepare my veggies because that's going to be the next thing that we're getting ready to incorporate in our soup. So you totally cannot do a chicken noodle soup without celery. Like, I've gone to restaurants and I've asked for a chicken noodle soup because I just love like the very homey, kind of hearty taste of a chicken noodle soup. And when there ain't no celery in it, I'm like, who was your grandmother? Did you even have a grandmother? Because why don't you have celery in that soup? And I'm taking out the pieces that are kind of like beat up because I don't like, that's not good for presentation. I don't want to see that in my soup. Um, and you want to also make sure that anytime you're taking any type of root vegetables or vegetables that grow in the ground with dirt or anything like that, that you really like give it a nice rinse, a nice little wash off because you don't want to have, you know, that dirt in your food. Although we grew up eating mud pies. But we don't need to be eating mud pies right now in our, you know, in the late stages of our lives. We built up our immune system pretty good. And then you want to chop it down so it's not too chunky, but I kind of like my celery chunky in my soup. Take that down. A little other little pieces. And I like to cook my celery for a bit because I like when it's like tender and not too tough in the in the soup. So we're gonna that's the, the first veggie after that onion that we put in there. Next thing we're gonna do is and with soup you don't really want to like go too hard with it. You don't want to like feel like oh my god everything is not right. You know it's not perfect. Here in the restaurant um, we serve things like chicken wings and. Um, all kinds of stuff, oxtail and fish, and so we come across a lot of carrot sticks and celery. 
because they, they, they accompany those really like bar-like foods, but I don't like to waste those things. So I had some celery sticks left over, and so being that I don't want to waste my celery sticks, I'm, uh, and some carrot sticks, carrot sticks, I'm sorry. Um, I had these carrot sticks and I didn't want to waste them, so I'm throwing them in my soup. Carrot is like key in a chicken noodle soup as well, along with your celery. If anybody knows what a mirepoix is, that's the three, right? The carrot, the onion, and the celery is the mirepoix. So right now, you have a French name going on in our soul food soup. The mirepoix is marrying together, creating a very aromatic sort of fragrance in here that's making me feel like I'm at home, which I am. And that is cooking down nicely. Now I want to add a little bit more of my blend of canola and grapeseed. And I'm going to start cutting my Brussels sprouts. So Brussels sprouts were the most probably hated vegetable in all of the land. Every child in the world hated to eat these tiny little cabbage, right? I have grown to absolutely love Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts have such a unique flavor and texture in a lot of the dishes that I create here. And I just think that we should open our minds. Like, I get a lot of customers that will say they love their fried, they love them crispy, they want them damn near burnt. Um, and I get excited when they ask for those things because the Brussels sprout is a unique veggie. And if you treat it right, you season it right, that's really key. Um, it will really taste really, really good in just about anything that you're cooking. Even if you just want to eat the Brussels sprout sort of sauteed kind of hard and it's like a little bit crusty all over the sides. And then you add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. That right there is like the bottom. But I'm going to put it in here and cook it down because it is like a little baby cabbage. And I'm going to let it get a little bit crusty on the sides. You're going to be shocked at how delicious this soup is going to taste to you when you're feeling a little bit low energy and things are not necessarily so totally right in your life. But this soup makes everything right in life. So I have a red pepper and... Red pepper, I tend to want to add, you know, sort of after all the other vegetables have gone in because peppers cook down very easily and get very, very soft, very, very tender. And so I don't want to like cook it to the point where I lose it and I can't see it and it's not visible in my dish. So I'm getting it cut and then I'm going to throw it in after I throw this other powerful leaf in my soup. So just making sure I give it a nice little rough little dice chop here. I'm going to be able to move it off to the side. And I'm going to cut that onion too because I'm ODing over the onion. Like, I'm going to add that onion in there. And that soup is cooking up so nice already, just like in the beginning stages, creating that body of flavor is like key for me. I think my, my, my tea is kind of like calling me, so I want to just take like a moment of mindfulness. Y'all give me a minute, like don't be rushing me. And you hear me like sniffling and all that, like I gotta get all that out of here. You see my stir like went away, it's gone, it's all in there. And that means it changed a little bit of color. It's no longer, you know, like, you know, clear or see-through. It is totally steeped and just doing its own thing. You want to get your life right? That right there, just did it. So my soup is doing a really great job of coming together really smelling up the joint and making me feel like I'm already just healed and if you speak things into existence and believe in like the manifestation of speaking things into existence or coming to fruition then you're already healed just the minute that you even start bringing these ingredients together and that's really cooking up I'm telling you it's cooking up really nice so now I have my final veggie that I want to add into this that 
really creates it and makes it a soul food soup. And that's a couple fresh leaves of collard greens. And so I came across this dish here in the restaurant and I really didn't know what I was doing, but I had two pots of collard greens going. And I was like, what am I gonna do with all these collard greens? Because like, I didn't need to get rid of all of them in that same day, but I wanted to use them. And so I took a lot of these ingredients that you see right here in the soup and I threw them into the pot of collard greens. And that's kind of like how I came across this soul food soup. Collard greens are great because they are very high in vitamin K. And if you're feeling a little bit low on energy and low on iron, then you want to be able to take in the collard green and utilize that as medicine. Now we've added a lot of nice little medicine in this dish already. And so this collard green just becomes a part of the justice league of soups that are going to heal you. So now that we got that final vegetable put in there, we're going to throw these other vegetables in here. I'm like the person that y'all be thinking I'm doing the most, but I'm really just doing me. So I'm taking this garlic and I'm going to take my onions and my peppers and I'm going to throw that in to my soup because this is going to be serious. Just taking in these things along with that broth and that and those vitamins that we already placed into that soup, um, it's already a recipe for healing. It's vibrant, it's beautiful, it's got all this color, and you're looking at it and seeing the color and like saying, okay, it's looking a little bit too healthy? Absolutely not. This is so healthy for you and so soul satisfying at the same time that you just don't want to rob yourself of having a good time with a really good soup that is really going to blow your mind, right? So now I want to add my final vitamin in, and this is B12, this is a B12 shot. You know, people look at vitamins and they like say like, oh, you're supposed to take it this way or that way. You can take vitamins however you choose to take vitamins. Your mother tricked you into taking Flintstone vitamins or any other kind of vitamins in your life. And, you know, if they were creative enough to put them into your food and make the food taste good, you have no idea how beneficial it would be to your whole life if you have been doing it your entire life. And so now I'm going to flavor it again because we're getting ready to add our broth in. It's always about layering the flavors, making sure that we're putting all of our herbs and our spices in there nice. The powerful punch of that white pepper along with that crushed, uh, pop, that, that coarse black pepper. That just gives it like a really nice spicy taste. And if you want to get the mucus out and all that stuff that's all caught up in you, then you want to make things a little tiny bit spicy. Now I've got that extra layer of flavor in there. Now we're going to turn this into a broth. Because everything looks like it's pretty much cooked down to what I want it to be cooked down. Now what you have to remember is I can provide you with the recipe, but you have to really decide on how this is gonna work for you. So you have to kind of like take some time to say, I like my things cooked down, you know, a lot. I like my vegetables al dente or my pasta al dente, whatever it is that you choose to do. Just make sure that you don't ever try to alter a protein like a chicken and not cook it all the way. Your proteins need to be cooked at the proper temperatures. Everything else is really on you. Okay, vegetables can go down raw or cooked. Either way, they're going to be good to you. So now here I have a little bit of um, chicken broth. And I'm going to add my chicken broth in now before I put in my water because I want the chicken broth to get all over all of the things that are in this pot. And I don't want the water to like hold any or capture any like bubbles of seasoning and they don't get broken down in the soup. 
I'm going to stir that all around. Get it nice and covered up all over. I'm telling you, this soup is like, smelling like life to me right now. It is life, because there's everything in here is talking to me about how to get my life together. And sometimes it's just about curling up on the couch, having a bowl of soup, watching a really good television show, or reading a nice book, or listening to a book, and just taking the day in. We get so overwhelmed with the hustle and buff bustle of life that we don't ever really take things in and really like understand that these things are just, they're heaven to us, they're good to us. So now I got, I'm going to make this soup a tomato-based soup. And so I'm gonna add in a little bit of tomato sauce and the tomato sauce actually has vegetables incorporated in that too. So I cooked some vegetables down in that tomato sauce just to make sure that I was getting all of the veggies and all of the, you know, good things that I'm going to need to really heal myself. You know, like I need to make sure that it's all throughout the entire dish. So now that's also going to give the soup a little bit of color, a little bit of a tint. And it's going to give it a nice acidic flavor that is going to taste really good once I add this, this uh, water in here and create the broth. So now I got my water here. And what I want to do is I want to put enough water in there to submerge all of the ingredients that are in the pot. I don't want to overdo it because I want the soup to cook just right. Too much water could take away a lot of what I put into that pot already in terms of seasoning, and I don't want to lose that. So I want to make sure that I put just enough water in there to make it an actual soup. So making sure that all the chicken wings are all covered up, all the veggies are all covered is really good, and that's got the pot, the, the pot half full, right, instead of half empty. Now that I have it all seasoned up everything is in there nicely taken care of the veggies are cut down now we're going to turn our heat up and we're going to let that bad boy boil it's going to boil up and it's going to cook the chicken to perfection you don't want to cook the chicken to the point where the meat is like totally falling off the bone and then you got bones all flying all over in the boat in the in the soup you want to cook it to the point where you know the soup is absolutely perfect. So the tenderness of the chicken and peeling it with a knife or a fork, making sure that it's, you know, tearing away from the bone is perfect. Um, it'll take roughly about 10 or 15 minutes to do. And when we get to that stage, a little bit closer towards the end, we're going to add in the very last ingredient. And so I told you this was a healing soup, a chicken noodle soup so I have to put in the noodle so you give us about 10 or so minutes let this chicken cook up and then we're gonna throw in our noodles cook them down for eight minutes and then we're gonna put that bad boy in that bowl and I'm gonna heal myself you guys get ready let me just work this thing out I'm gonna clean up a little bit of my mess and then we're gonna come back and soup is gonna be done so we let about 15 or so minutes go by making sure that those drumsticks that were like a little thick are cooked down. I already have impaled a piece of my chicken to make sure that we're good. And so now we're gonna add in our pasta. And this is gonna take just a few minutes. We're gonna get it cooked down just enough so that we can get ready to enjoy it. Now I wanna show you one of two ways to make this chicken noodle soup. Two ways is really better than one, right? These are the um, the noodles, the pasta, that went pretty viral all over social media. Everybody was looking for these little skinny mafadine uh, lasagna noodles that everybody was using in all their Alfredo dishes, going crazy. The reason I'm using them is because I OD'd buying them online and I had so many of them in the back in my pantry. And so, I wasn't going to drive myself nuts about a pasta. I was going to find a pasta to put in this soup, and that was just going to work. So take whatever pasta you can uh, find and just break it up. If it's a long pasta noodle, a spaghetti, you know, 
you can turn it into a sort of, I can't remember what they call it, like a fighty, video, fighty or whatever. That's like a broken up spaghetti noodle, um, which is blasphemy in the Italian culture. Um, but we're going to take this and we're going to break these down and add these in here and let them cook down. And I'm going to say that the noodle is not the star of the show. The vegetables, the vitamins, you know, the broth are really the star of this show right here. And so I don't want to overdo it with my pasta. I'm putting just enough in because what happens when you make a chicken noodle soup is you put the pasta in and the pasta absorbs all the broth and then you have no broth left for your soup. So I don't want to put too much pasta in there and then I don't have any broth to really slurp and make annoying noises with and then I'm not feeling healed. So we're going to make sure we get it covered up just enough underneath what broth we do have here and we're going to let that cook down. It's going to take roughly about seven to eight minutes to be al dente, still have a bite, but be tender enough to eat and enjoy. And as soon as that's done, we're going to plate our stuff. But what I want to do is I want to add in a couple other un ingredients that I believe will really take this dish to the next level. So like for me, anytime that I feel like I'm a little bit weighed down or I'm mucus filled and I want to get those things out of me, I believe in bringing in the spice of life. And so I'm going to take a little bit of crushed red pepper or you could go with something like a scotch bonnet, a habanero pepper. And you can put that in your soup to bring out the spice in your soup. So I'm adding this crushed red pepper because I like the way that crushed red pepper tastes. And then my secret ingredient, which is super powerful, is butter gives body. Now, yes, it may add a few pounds to your love handles, um, a couple of rolls or so, but it also gives a dish body. It gives it a silkiness, a smoothness about it and also a really nice flavor. And so I wanna take a little bit of butter and I wanna add that into my soup because it's a tomato-based uh, soup and one of the secret ingredients that I put in my spaghetti is butter. I put it in there to make it a little bit velvety, give it a little bit of body, and it changes the way that that tomato sauce tastes in my spaghetti. So I'm adding that to my soup. So now that I've added the butter in there, I can clearly see that it's giving it that creaminess to the broth that's gonna make it really taste delicious when I go to put this bad boy in my bowl. And I'm trying to get all of my noodles, like my pasta down there to the towards the bottom of the broth so that it can cook. You know, it can come, it can be connected and made one with the heat. And the chicken can come up top because I don't I don't wanna overcook the chicken. And it's got its fair share of heat. So those noodles are cooking down. As you can see, everything is doing its thing. That sauce is like, you got a little bit of the tint of the red. You can see that it's not too thin a broth. It's like got a little bit of body. And that I believe is coming from the vegetables, you know, those drippings at the bottom when we cook the chicken, and then also that butter. Now, if you're somebody who really likes your soup super brothy, super thin, um, and you want to have more juice in there, you could add a little bit more water or you can add an already made broth. So if you, you go into a supermarket, you get the container of chicken broth, um, you know, whether it be chicken, I would use chicken, not beef, because you got a chicken dish here, you can use turkey if you want to, or you can use a vegetable if you want to kind of like come away from the chicken. And you can add a little bit of that broth right in here where it's going to have the balance of flavor. It's not going to take away and it's not going to do too much to it. Um, and you can make it a little bit more brothy. Me, I want mine like a little thicker. I have the ability to scoop enough of my broth out. It's pretty much me and my homie eating some soup today. And so I'm not going to take anything away from that. But I'm going to turn my heat down. I'm going to let this thing cook up for a few more minutes. And then we're going to plate or bowl this bad boy, right? So if you need to get rid of anything or do anything, go ahead, go do that. 
take a sip of your tea, take a moment of mindfulness to really just like take in gratitude, say thank you, bring in that good energy because I'm already feeling healed. Now, honestly, I don't even want to lie to you. I came into this situation and from intro to outro, I'm a totally different person. I don't know if it's because I'm taking in the aroma of these vegetables cooking. I don't know if my ancestors have shown up and now they want to have a conversation with me about all the wonderful things that are ahead of my life. I don't know if it's just that I have too much excitement about getting ready to eat this soup, but I'm telling you right now, I don't feel anything like I felt when I first started. And that's a transparent moment with you guys because we do kind of like go through our days and think that we have to like pretend to be some kind of way for everybody else when you really don't have to. If your vibration is low, your energy is low, take a moment, meditate, think about, focus on the good and not and not to focus on the things that captured your spirit or made you down. You know what I mean? Like you really want to think about what can I do to get out of the funk, right? So come away from the negativity. Come away from the negativity. Don't really focus on it. Focus on the good. And so what I'm focusing on is the outcome of this suit. And that has got me really excited so now we're close to done and the key is like letting things cook let it do its thing you know like don't rush it if you need to take a break go take a break you know if you need to add a few more things add a few more things if you feel like you know it's missing something season it well taste in between those things are really important in cooking we don't want to get stuck in cooking a dish and thinking that oh she provided a recipe but now I have to follow it to a T and I want to make sure that it tastes just like hers no the, the the key to cooking is making sure that you cook to your own taste bud make you feel good and this is all very therapeutic as far as I'm concerned so now I didn't need all that pasta I'm gonna save this um I would say do your final pinches at the end, after you tried it out and saw if it tasted, if it was perfect, um, I'm gonna try, I'll try it, just so you can see me do some, cause that's what they do on the fancy cooking shows. That tastes like, I'm scared. I'm scared to tell you that that tastes really, really freaking good. You know what it just made me think about? It made me think about like New Orleans again. That almost comes off like gumbo in a sense. Like I feel like that tastes like gumbo. I don't even want to mess with that right now. That is like heaven. It's so full and so flavorful and like, whoo, that's crazy right there. This is like almost not even a soup. It's like a stew. So when it's stewed down, it's cooked down, it almost turns into like a stew. This has made a name for itself. This is a bad behind stew right here. So now I'm gonna check and see if my pasta is ready to go. Cause I think that it is and I don't want, like I said, I don't wanna like cook it down too much. I'm gonna put it right on my little spoon. And I'm going to try that too. Just because. The spice is good. But I think adding a little bit of water. Just because I want to make sure that it's still a soup. So I'm putting a tiny bit of water in there. Not to destroy, not to take away the spice. Because I love the spice of this. This is really, really good. But I need more fluid to make sure that the noodles get cooked down perfectly. And they are just about to where I like them to be. So I can turn my heat up a little bit more, put it back on medium, and then I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna rush this. I'm gonna make sure that this is perfect. And then I'm gonna show you guys a little secret to like really make this soup like next level delicious. like. It's already delicious, like there's really not a lot to do, but just like, I'm gonna just watch the pot boil until those noodles are like really, really deliciously 
soft, tender, and then we're going to plate, but then I'm going to add something else, just because I think you should just try this, try this at home kind of thing. Give me just a minute. So we let those few minutes go by, and I hope that you got all of your stuff ready to go to tear this soup up, because like I said before, I am already healed, and I didn't even eat the soup yet. So what I want to show you is, I want to show you how to be versatile in preparing a nice soup. Like I said, this soup is very spicy, but this soup is going to heal you. So I'm turning my heat down, and we're going to plate our first bowl of soup. I want to make sure that I get all of the contents, that collard green, those carrots, those peppers, that garlic, all that. I want to get all of that, right? Got that chicken right there. And then I want to grab some of that really delicious, beautiful, and flavorful broth, right? Now that's soup number one, right? What if you could take a bowl of soup and you could change the entire story just by adding one ingredient. So I'm gonna grab all those ingredients again. The chicken, the collard greens, the carrots, the peppers, the onions, those Brussels sprouts that are totally cooked down that you don't even see anymore. All right, and now we're gonna change the game with this soup. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add in a tiny bit of cream. That right there is going to change the whole dish because not only will it cool it down, but it'll make it like a creamy, version of your chicken noodle soup. So you got your soursop and your bay leaves and all those crazy, you know, herbs of chlorophyll and burdock root and bladderwrack and sea moss in there. And now this is just a totally different, this is a whole different ball game that you're messing around with. So I want to try my soup first, this one. And I want to get like the collard green and stuff. Mm. And that tastes. So with the cream, I take a sip. The cream actually made the soup tastes totally different than the first soup because the tomato base in here where it's more of a broth and with the vegetables I taste all of that but with the cream it almost tastes like there's like cheese or something in it it made it so velvety and nice especially because I did add the butter in there but right now these two soups as you can clearly see are home cooked soups really fabulous really really delicious and absolutely the truth I'll say if you need a moment you want to really heal you want to really feel good about yourself try this soup out you can make sure that you like it if you really do like this recipe you can comment because I need your feedback and I would absolutely love for you to share it but most of all I'm gonna need you to subscribe and hit that bell and get notifications every single time that I'm preparing a fabulous dish right here at the House of Soul. I hope you're healed. Enjoy your soup. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. And make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you can get all of the future recipes. And if you really love this recipe, then I would say go ahead and click like, then I'm gonna need you to share it and comment.